My name is Tina Laffer. Thank you for coming um, to my presentation called Accessible and Affordable Accommodations. Uh, my hope is that at the end of this that you will be able to implement some of these accommodations into your home um, or into your classroom. I currently do not work here at Perkins. I was working here up until about February, my apologies. Uh, I currently work at the Carroll Center for the Blind as the Director of Community Engagement and Outreach. Um, so it's a fancy way of saying I do all the admissions work and I also um, engage in the community um, at different COAs or at state agencies. Um, but I was um, a teacher for about 16 years, both here at Perkins and at the Carroll Center for the Blind um, many years ago. So thank you. So what teacher would I be if I didn't start off with objectives, right? All of us educators know that when we engage in a lesson or in a PowerPoint or anything, we need to know what are our objectives. So our objectives for today are to learn about accessibility. We're focusing on affordability. We want to learn about accommodations and we're looking at individualization, right? Because accommodations that we use for our students or for our children are not just random ideas. There are things that are focused for that student's or child's particular needs. And so, of course, what kind of an educator would I be if I did not give us all IEP objectives? Okay, <laughs> Very important that we are looking at what we're learning today. So my first goal for everyone in this room is by the end of today's training, I will learn three strategies for making my home more accessible for my child. Goal number two, this is a full IEP, okay? <laughs> By the end of today's training, I will better understand why blindness-specific products are not always what is best for my child. And we'll get more into what that exactly means. I told you, it's a full IEP. Goal number three. By the closing of this training, I, as a visual shopper, will begin to view products in a new way. Now that me doesn't necessarily mean that if you in this room are visually impaired yourself, it's just uh, thinking about viewing products that are on display at stores for someone with sight doesn't mean that it can't be used in a new and creative way for someone without vision. And lastly, this is a hefty goal, I think it's fairly measurable. By the closing of this training, I will recognize the power that I have to allow my child to be more engaged and independent within our home by making small adaptations and modifications to pre-existing appliances or spaces. Okay, were those measurable? Are they obtainable? I certainly hope so. All right, so my, one of my biggest pet peeves as an educator, whether it be working with students or with adults, is how incredibly challenging it can be to say to someone, hey, you're new to vision loss, go buy all these things. Or, hey, mom, dad, can you buy all this stuff for your kids to make it more accessible? That can be really challenging. And so how can we make anybody's home more accessible? Really cheaply, all right? I love the dollar store. I went to the dollar store. Anybody else here like the dollar store, right? Yeah, okay, dollar store is like so good. Ocean State job lot, okay? I went to the dollar store with my mom and I said, I wanna buy $30 worth of stuff to be able to modify somebody's home. And I'm throwing stuff in the carriage and my mom's like, I don't understand how you're gonna use this. And I said, well, you will see, all right? You will see. I added a photo of my um, receipt just in case nobody believed me. So it's, it's up there for reference. So accommodations are affordable, okay? They should not break the bank. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was labeling. Okay, labeling. Labeling can be anything, right? We think about labeling file cabinets or file folders. Let's like break beyond that, okay? We could label anything. What I have up on the screen is a photo of a microwave, the keypad. We're talking about the flat, non-tactile, microwave, it has the numbers, it has all these buttons all over it. We got popcorn, we got defrost. Has anybody ever used a potato button? <laughs> you have? I get have. out of here, get I out. Just used them this week. Get out, get out. Like, oh, you, know, you, know. you have to? Really? Have time to 
Oh, all right. I love it. I love. All right. I I I take that back. Okay. So we have some potato button users, and what I want to think about is: Does everybody use the potato button? Okay. Some may. Some may not. Right. So do we need to label an entire microwave? No. And sometimes we may think, gosh, am I keeping information from my child? Am I withholding information by not fully labeling the entire um, appliance? And it's definitely something to have a conversation with your child or student about, but it doesn't mean that you need to label everything, at least to start. And so what I highlighted with a circle is the add 30 second button. If you have a microwave with this button, that's fabulous. Those are my favorite kind of microwaves. Not that anybody cares about my personal preference, but it is, it's a fabulous button because you can teach your child who may have never accessed a microwave before, press this button once, press this button twice, press this button three times, and that is how you can begin to teach how to use the microwave safely. Oh yeah. There we go, I wrote, my preferred models are those that have a quick 30 second start button, look at that. And so how did I mark the microwave? I wrote the marked a wave, I like puns, just bear with me, it's, always, <laughs> it's gonna be a long hour. Um, and so, so all I used were, instead of going through APH, instead of going to um, maxi aids or any of the traditional blindness specific catalogs or companies. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with any of those, but how do we make this more accessible and affordable for our families and for our, for our staff members? I used rough Velcro that I found at the dollar store that I stuck on the cancel button. Rough, we don't really like roughs. We don't really like to cancel things. So rough Velcro on cancel, <laughs> right? I don't know, just got to pair it somehow. And I have these, um, felt pads that you put underneath your chairs so your chairs don't squeak and I put that on um, the 30 second button. So that way all you have to do is feel for the nice smooth. That's a very nice texture. We like to start things. All right. And that's how we, how we mark it. Over time, as your student, your child begins to access the microwave, you can start adding more. You can start to add numerals or the frost or the beloved potato button. You can do all of those things and more, okay? The, en the options are endless, but this is just how to get started. Ooh. So I wrote, what did I use? I used felt chair protective circles. Those were in the hardware section of all places in the um, dollar store. And Velcro, which was found in the arts and craft section. And so I want to take a moment to say it's not a fail if you don't use Braille. We often think, oh, my child is using Braille at, at school. Do I need to use Braille at home? I don't know Braille. Should I use Braille? I don't know. It's okay, everybody's learning, right? Everybody is still learning Braille. Maybe you never learned Braille and that's okay. As long as you're making your appliance and your home accessible, that's the main objective, right, is accessibility. And so that can be achieved through any tactile label, whether it be the Velcro or the felt pads. And all that tactile means, for anybody who's unfamiliar with that term, just means something that is raised, so it's more easily noticed through your child, your student's sense of touch. All right, so. so. Here's a photo of some stickers that I found in the arts and crafts section. So along with my felt pads, my rough felt grow, I, I also found these fun scrapbooking stickers. They're like mosaic tiles, very fun. They have nothing to do with blindness, but they are absolutely tactile and you could totally put these on a microwave, put these on a washing machine. Can anybody else think of another appliance or place where they could put a tactile sticker? Love it, dishwasher, absolutely. And those are usually square too. Yeah, so like you could have like a nice square mosaic tile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. You know what else I, I use too is like when you buy the foam letter stickers. Oh, so good. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, has the circle that you just punch out of it. I love it. Like you, I don't like to throw it in the <laughs> bowl, so I stick them on my own washing machine. So <laughs> resourceful. No, that's absolutely perfect. I love, love the foam stickers. The other one I have here are small little pearl stickers. I actually found that I didn't like these after I bought them because they fell off really easily. But I, d I did buy them. And they're cute, I'm sure they're great for scrapbooking. But we're not talking about scrapbooking. 
And so the next appliance that I decided to highlight was the Keurig, right? It's a very easy appliance. Depending upon the model that you have, most of the buttons are already tactile. So the um, Keurig styles, if you will, that have those touch screens are not as easily made accessible. So we want to think about the older models. Or just because something's new and shiny doesn't always mean that it's the best. Like those new, um, really fun ovens that are all like touch screen, like you can't make those accessible. So how do we make a Keurig accessible? Again, just two buttons. I have one of the pearl buttons that actually wasn't all that great on the power. Just so a student can find power, we need to be able to turn it off and on. And I am predetermining the amount of water that would be dispensed on the student's behalf. Now, am I taking away information from that student? Technically, right? I'm only allowing them to have access, if you will, in a sense, one of the buttons, but that's not necessarily a negative thing. We're just giving them access to one. We're describing the rest. They know what the other buttons are, but we're easily labeling one to not overly clutter the rest of the buttons, right? Because we talk a lot about visual clutter, especially when we talk about CVI, but there's also such a thing as tactile clutter having too much for a student to visually, excuse me, to actually um, explore can be overwhelming and more difficult to um, differentiate between the two. So of course, with my puns, instead of Keurig, it says coffee marker. Haha, <laughs> you guys are supposed to laugh, sorry. <laughs> coffee marker. So why overcomplicate when all we want to do is percolate? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you everybody, thank you. All right, so I wrote, what did I use today? I used the pearl sticker from the craft or scrapbooking section in that Velcro, which I also found in the arts and crafts section. Ooh, excuse me. I bought the same pearl, the, yeah. exactly the same stickers, yeah. the ones that don't stick, but a little drop of... Um, hot glue? Yeah, hot glue. Yeah, I was going to use Gorilla Glue, but then I figured I, this yeah. was my own stuff at home. I didn't do it, but... Excuse me, so up here I have an air fryer. And again, air fryers are a new thing. I absolutely love air fryers. I teach about them a lot. And we have two dials displayed. The top dial is time. The bottom dial is temperature. I would always teach, turn the dial all the way. Turn it to a full hour, I don't care. It's really hard to get a precise time on a dial with tac using tactile means, so I do it. Set it all the way to the hour, and we're going to use Alexa, we're going to use Siri, we're going to use some other means to set a timer. We just want to make sure that we turn it on. And we're telling the student what we're doing. We're telling our child what we're doing, and we're also allowing a student to interact with two devices at one time. The second dial is the temperature, and when we think about temperatures, it's usually less we need to mark, right? Maybe 350, maybe 350 and 400. So we're reducing the visual, the tactile clutter. We're increasing a student's independence by allowing them to interact with not one, but two different appliances or pieces of technology, the air fryer and a different timer. Um, so I wrote two dials, but only one label for my slide. How does this work? In the scenario, we are focusing on identifying one label, which is temperature. The label is placed at 350, as that is the most common temperature, and if needing timing, timing can be adjusted to work with the labeled temperature. So we would be setting our timer via the phone, Alexa, Siri, or a talking timer, and this increases the use of managing two devices simultaneously. Because again, it's that fine line between sharing and overstimulating. So we constantly want to think about, do we mark or not to mark, right? Um, so I have the KISS method up here. It, some people say it stands for one thing. I said, keep it simple, silly. Um, <laughs> it's a little nicer. Um, so we want to keep it simple, right? We're <laughs> keeping it simple. We're telling everybody what it is that we're marking and how we're marking it. Um, and we can always add, but it's really hard to remove. Um, so when we would uh, benefit from additional information, we're going to add it then. So 
So other types, so I know we already talked about labeling, but now it's more labeling, all right? Labeling part two, beyond appliances. Look at me go, all right. Paper tree, paper from the Dollar Tree, elevated, literally. So all I have here are some um, note cards. So what do you call those? Yeah, note cards. Index, index cards. cards. Thank you, thank you. We got some index cards, and I put them into a Braille machine, a Brailler, and I brailled on them. Right? Bra you don't have to use Braille paper. Any paper that is thick beyond a traditional printer paper can be brailled. Look at me, as long as it's thick, it'll do the trick, all right? <laughs> you heard it first and you heard it here, all right. So how do we make traditional bins or drawers more accessible? So in the prior photo, I had just a traditional um, um, kind of bins and boxes on a shelf that are very high in color contrast that kids may traditionally use to throw their toys in. So how do we use that to make it more accessible for the whole family? I added large print handwritten notes um, on each of the index cards that said bagels or popcorn, and I also had it braille so somebody can access those bins visually and non-visually. However, if you have young kids at home, one child who's visually impaired, one child who um, has some vision, you could always put cute little photos. You could draw a picture of a bagel on it and make this a fun way so that everybody is putting things where they belong because it's really difficult to you know, have everybody accessing the same bins and making sure that everything goes back where it belongs. You could also have this be an activity. So maybe if you don't know Braille, your student could always Braille these cards on your behalf, or you could always ask your child's TVI or teacher to Braille some cards. I'm sure that they would be more than happy to um, make that an activity in class. You could also just put the bags, like empty bags on there, yeah, absolutely, you know, absolutely, make it matching. Yeah, absolutely. So the next thing I wrote was organization. How do we cut our search time in half? So instead of searching an entire cabinet shelf we're going to designate baskets, bins, or boxes for your students. So think of a traditional cabinet. You open up those doors and you have tons of food. Popcorn, snacks, breads, bagels, pudding boxes, granola bars. So in this picture, there are different boxes and bins for each. Oh, got to have the ramen, of course. Absolutely, ramen noodles. Um, so it cuts that search time in half. Maybe in my snack, Bin, I have tortilla chips and animal crackers. Perhaps you grabbed the wrong one. At least you didn't grab a box of noodles, right? At least you're grabbing a snack. It may not be your preferred snack, but you grab something to eat. Perhaps you want, there's bread and bagels. Perhaps you grabbed English muffins by accident. Well, at least it's a breakfast food. And it cuts that search time in half. Or at, at least if you want to then find the bagels, you know exactly where to look instead of looking through every bin. All right, so my, the next couple of slides I have are of different cabinets that we all have at home um, that are very visually cluttered, right? So I have up on the slide, it says traditional and it's a spice cabinet. Ginger, cumin, Italian seasoning, chili powder, crushed, really, crushed red peppers, right? A whole bunch of stuff. And how do you figure out which one you want? I know me at home sometimes I'm like, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it, right? And we're looking, looking, looking. So, and we have vision, perhaps, to look through those. But what if you don't have vision to access in a quick way? How are we going to organize this? And how are we going to organize this in a way that is easy? I also see from my friend who likes foam letters, I got a celery salt with a CS with uh, some, some foam stickers. There are some pen friend stickers on here that I spy. Um, that's cool. I was going to ask. Yeah. And I know it's not it's a tool that's a little more expensive than foam stickers, but exactly. it's super cool. And yeah. Cool. I'm not talking about I love the pen friend. I could I could give probably a two hour talk about the pen oh, friend yeah. and the things that I've done 
with a pen friend. Not like a not like a bad way, like a very good way, like the things that I've done with pen friend. Uh, fabulous, fabulous tool, and I love it, but it's blindness specific, so I'm not talking about it today. But if you have any questions after or any tips, I'm happy to happy to chat with you about the pen friends. Talking label wand is actually a little bit better because the stickers are tactile themselves, yeah. making the oh loved it. All right, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Random tangent. So how do I make that shelf of all of the spices more accessible? Baskets, all right? So I've been meaning to access all these. So I have in front of me a table with a whole bunch of stuff, the $30 worth of stuff that I bought at the dollar store. <laughs> so right now I'm just holding a, I would say a dollar basket, but now they're a dollar twenty-five for anybody who hasn't been to the dollar store recently. So I have my one dollar and twenty-five cent basket here. And what I did in the photo is I just separated all the different spices. I have one for my salt and pepper, right? Because that should always be in one place. We always need salt, we always need pepper. The next basket says leafy. What's in the leafy basket? Parsley, oregano, thyme. Italian, basil, yay, I love basil. All right, then we got our poultry and meat spices. I have another basket for um, spicy spices. I have, that's a good one. I have a basket up on the next shelf for my vinegars, my rice wine vinegar, my other vinegars. I have one called baking. If I grab a spicy spice instead of a baking spice, I'm gonna be very sad. But if I grab cinnamon or nutmeg, it's not the end of the world, right? It's not going to ruin my cookies. So all my cooking spices are in the same, or cookie spices, are in the same basket called baking. To the right of that, I have oils. Get it? Oil, vinegar, right? On either sides. And in the middle, I got my baking soda. See what I got there? Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I taught cooking specifically for the blind and visually impaired for eight years. So that's why a lot of this is focused around cooking, because I like to cook. A lot. Sometimes. Sometimes that's all I cook, I, all I do, and then I go home and I don't want to cook, so. Um, so now I have a photo, and it's a little distorted, my apologies, of a freezer, okay? So everybody here just like looked through the freezer, they can't find something, or it's difficult. Um, so in this photo, we have your frozen fruits, your frozen veggies, it looks like meats of some kind. How do we make this more accessible? Same idea, baskets. So I have a basket for my vegetables, a basket for my fruit, my chicken, my beef. So if your child wants to make a smoothie, you grab the smoothie basket, the fruit basket. Again, maybe you grab the wrong fruit. All right, at least it's not raw chicken, you know? I wanted vegetables to go with my dinner. I really wanted peas. I got corn. You know, it stinks, but at least it wasn't strawberries, all right? Baskets are fantastic, and they're only $1.25. Not a blindness specific product, but my God, can it revolutionize your kitchen to make it unbelievably more accessible. Do you need special stickers for them to stay on in the freezer? These are held on by rubber bands with the special blindness specific paper. That's why I'm not talking about it, but it's like, ooh. Friends, help me out. It's like a fun see-through plastic that you can put in a brailler. They're like braille tags. Does anybody ever remember this? APH made them a while ago, and they had like the rubber thingies that like went through. You know, it, yes. what do they call it? Do you know? No. No. All right. Well, anyways, <laughs> get out of here. You can't. You didn't help me at all. Anyway, so that's what those are. So this says beef and braille, and it has those like weird like pokey elastics. And that's how that's brailed. And then I have the tape that says vegetables, fruit. A lot of folks just benefit from similar placement. So always knowing which bin has what item in it in its location. So you're always grabbing the entire bin. And then you can sit, leisurely look through, and then place the entire basket back where it belongs. But yeah, it is hard to sometimes label. That's why colored baskets, using different ones. So we got red for beef, haha, uh -huh, fruit. It's supposed to be green, but it's not. I don't know. Yeah, those are wicked great. I've used those too. Those are excellent, excellent. Yep. Yeah. See, look at that. It's not blind. Just use packing tape to laminate a piece of an index card. I do that too. I've done that too. And then you know what you got to use? You know those donut stickers? They're called um, three-ring binder reinforcers. If you put those. 
Well, that and so that way your rubber band won't pull through the packaging tape. Yes. Because I used to make my own pen friend yeah. labels for clothes. And if you put a pen friend label in between packaging tape, then it's washer machine proof, right? But then if you put a safety pin through it so you can easily remove it from your clothing before you wear it, right? Because you don't want to wear like an itchy pen friend tag. When you relabel it before it goes into the washer, um, it'll get pulled through. So I used to always use the donut reinforcing yeah. stickers, but they're really hard to make. They're not fun to like yeah, mass produce. Yeah. That's pretty fancy. No, because I was just talking about like labeling your your hamburger helper flavors. For oh, kids. just kidding. So yeah. Like way extra that's <laughs> I, that's what I mean. I could I could do a two hour talk on the pen friend know, like like, like easy. I love the pen friend. Oh yeah, I'll do that next year. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's see. So. And talking about all these baskets and bins, it sounds like a lot of work, but it's also a really great opportunity for your student or your child to help sort, right? So maybe it's just right now, you're only sorting snacks. So your child can choose between oatmeal or granola bars for breakfast. And when you come home, you're putting away all the groceries and you're saying, you know what? Jimmy, come on over and sit with me. We're gonna sort these, these things together. Here's a granola bar. Where does a granola bar go? and maybe they're putting it into a tactile bin or the yellow bin or whatever bin that they help choose, that's where they're gonna go and they're gonna help put that away and take responsibility. Hey, here's oatmeal or whatever it may be. And this is a great activity to do whether it be in the classroom or at home. It's we're working on sorting, we're working on um, advocacy and just being able to engage at home and have um, some autonomy. I want to let you know that I had just moved when I took this photo, and these were the only things I had in my refrigerator, <laughs> okay? <laughs> up, on the, up in this photo, we have a bottle of lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, hot sauce, and grape jelly. My apologies. My, I had moved and needed to take a photo, and that's what I got. And so this is traditional. Searching the ever-changing shelf in the door for a favorite condiment. We've all been there, right? I want the ranch dressing. Oh, here's Thousand Island, here's Caesar, here's that. So how do we help identify perhaps even just that one item that your child really favors? Uh, pipe cleaner, just thinking of what it was called, right? Buck 25, wrap this around one of your child's favorite condiments. Perhaps you use those, fa um, those shelves in your refrigerator door and you're gonna label hot dog condiments or for your burger, right? Your sandwich condiments versus your salad dressings versus your other. And you can really separate them really well and then organize different ones with the pipe cleaners. I always forget what these are called, my apologies. Love pipe cleaners. Love pipe cleaners. Um, all right. Again, my apologies. This is all I had. So I got a picture of a not so hot looking fridge, all right? Got a lot of water, we got some takeout, and some more takeout. And this is very overstimulating, right? And it takes a long time to search. How do I find what it is that I'm looking for? And one of my big rules is first in, first out. Wait. Yeah, first in, first out, right? No, last in, first out. Last in, first out. Woo! Thank you. I didn't finish my second cup of coffee because I didn't want to be all jittery for you guys, but that means, you know, I got to weigh the pros and cons. So, so I have a lot going on in this fridge. And perhaps we don't want our student or our child to be able to access every last thing, right? Maybe that's too overwhelming at this point, and we just want one thing for them to be able to do with independence. So you add one basket for leftovers. Hey, after school, you wanna be able to grab a snack. It's gonna be in your basket. Go ahead for your basket, go ahead. Again, this is just Chinese food in a box, but maybe it's in a Pyrex container and they're able to open the lid and they're able to access that marked microwave, okay? Any questions so far? I talk really fast. No? Okay, good. 
So it says functional bins. Grouping all of your items that you need for an activity in one place, right? So like items. So this example is kind of based off of what I was saying prior about your um, leftovers. So I have up on the screen, what are some items that you need to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? I have bread, I have peanut butter. What else do I need? Jelly, jelly. there we go. But what Knife. else do I? Knife. Knife, good, what else? Plate. Plate, yeah, 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 good. Utensil for spreading, oh, I knew I wasn't talking to a group of amateurs. You guys got it, right? <laughs> and I also wrote up there, right, we had utensil, and I also put a way to wrap it, but somebody said plate, because you could just be eating it right away, absolutely. Um, so instead of saying to your child, all right, don't forget the this, don't forget the that, put it all in the fridge. My spoons aren't gonna go bad if I put them in the fridge. Is it weird? It's a little, it's a little strange, but that's okay. We're all about building independence. And if your child has a hard time going from drawer to sink to cabinet to getting the bread to getting the jelly, just put it all in the, in the basket. Grab an extra box of sandwich bags and they can put it in there. It's okay if it's in the refrigerator because we're all about building independence. And that doesn't start from going to cabinet to cabinet. It starts with these steps right here. So in the basket, I have a different one. It's more plasticky so it doesn't smell um, but I have spoons peanut butter jelly bread I also have ham I think I'm just thinking about ham sandwiches as well bags uh, Ziploc bags so that's a great way to build our independence so spoons in the fridge bizarre does everybody here use a spoon for spreading? No? I love it. Me too, me too. So if you've never taught spreading with a spoon, give it a try. It sound, again, it sounds weird, but I promise it's better. So you want to lift up with the back of the spoon, then flip your spoon over. We now have two fingers on the inside of the spoon to apply pressure and move back and forth in a much easier motion. We're not going to rip the bread it's much easier to control because our hand is closer to what we're applying versus holding way back up on a knife. We're also not going to rip the bread because there's no, you know, it's not a serrated edge. What's also great about it is if your child squirted out too much mustard, you just scoop it up with the spoon. Also, if you're working on spreading, I highly recommend toasting your bread first. It gives auditory feedback while spreading. Um, and it's all, I know, I know. I learned that one the hard way. Um, so it gives the auditory feedback. It's also less harder. It's not as easy to rip. So, um, and then depending upon what you're spreading, it's easier to spread because it starts, it's hot and all that stuff. So I have a bin containing all of the items your child needs to make a sandwich should be in one place in the fridge or in the cabinet if it's all shelf stable. Everything in one basket decreases your search time and frustration. It's much easier to carry, right? Instead of grabbing one item, bringing it to the table, another item, bringing it to the table, they do it all at once. And it allows your child to be more independent with just one modification. All right. My next slide says, measuring more than just progress. Ooh. So puffy paint. So everybody here has used puffy paint before? Good, all right, all right, all right. So I have measuring cups. My one cup has one bump, my half cup has two bumps, three cup, or half, third cup has three bumps, fourth cup has four bumps, all right? Very easy. Do they sell brailled measuring cups? Of course they do. Why not make them yourself from the dollar store, right? <laughs> if they get ruined, that's okay, they were $1.25. I have yellow puff paint on here, which I realized afterwards did not give that much great uh, visual uh, contrast. But tact tactile-wise, it, uh, it still works. It's still functioning. I will say, as a side, I'm not talking about blindness-specific products, but if you want a really excellent blindness-specific puff paint, it's called Highmark 2000. It will go through the dishwasher much better than just your standard puff paint will. 
High Mark 2000, you can get it from uh, Max Eads, Independent Living Eads, and on Amazon, of course. It only comes in white and orange, um, but it's one of my favorites, just as an aside. Because um, we want to start teaching measuring. And now perhaps when we're teaching measuring, we're not necessarily teaching one cup versus a half cup, but just scooping. How do we just scoop to start? How do we measure liquids? Liquids are really hard to measure, especially if you're measuring something really tall, like a big container of soda. This is 7-Up. Has anybody ever made 7-Up biscuits? They're fabulous. It's a really fun recipe to teach um, measuring both solids and liquids. And so it's one cu four cups of Bisquick and uh, one cup of 7-Up and then a whole bunch of butter. Anyways, that's how I used to always introduce two modalities of measuring different things. So you have your traditional measuring cups, which are for our solids of any kind. In any metal measuring cup, you can always bend the handle at a nice 90 degree angle. So when you stick it straight down into any container of liquid and pull it straight up, you will have the perfect measure every single time. There's no need to be pouring liquids into a specific measuring cup because we know that spills happen. It also allows us to contain any spill and then, bearing that the kids' hands are clean and what have you, you can then reuse this and put it back into the bottle, right? So we're not wasting all of the um, extra liquid. I could not find metal measuring cups at the dollar store. I, pro like, I looked and I couldn't find them, but I'm sure like, I've seen them there in the past. So this also is really good, great for extracts. So I teach, or used to teach prior to my new position, a lot of adults who were new to vision loss. A lot of folks in the elderly community and they really missed baking. And so what I have up on the screen is a baby food container that was cleaned out, um, filled with anise. That's my favorite extract. Um, and a measuring spoon. And the, the measuring spoon is metal. So same idea, I bent the handle. We know how hard it is to try to measure out a little, little bit of, you know, whatever kind of extract it may be onto that spoon, so why bother? We're gonna bend our spoon, stick it straight down, pull it straight up, perfect measure every time. I know, I know, like we should all be doing this, you know what I mean? Like this is, and these are blindness specific tools. They're just really nice ideas for everybody. Does it look weird if you open up a cabinet and you have like, you know, squash in your cat, like filled with like vanilla? Yeah, it's weird, but like it works. Um, so it's one of, this is probably one of my favorite, favorite adaptations just because it allows everyone to access those finite small measuring amounts um, to everybody. All right, so then I said, use what you have. I couldn't find metal measuring spoons. Again, I know that they exist at the dollar store, but sometimes it's hit or miss, so, you know. I just took two spoons that I had in my drawer, and then my husband was like, what are you doing? And I said, don't worry about it, I'll buy new ones. Mm -hmm. And I wrote, bend with your hand, not with your mind, because I like to think that I'm funny, and I'm really not. <laughs> All right. So my favorite, favorite, favorite thing in the whole wide world are trays. I, I like must have been a tray salesman in my other life. I gave a one hour talk, I wish I was joking, about trays once. And it, like I just love trays. I think trays are fantastic. So I'm talking McDonald's cafeteria trays, right? Those generic, regular old cafeteria trays. They can do so much. Everything, I love them, all right? They can contain a workspace. So in this photo, I was talking about tactile discrimination. Can you find different stuff? Do you know where that would be if I didn't have a tray? Everywhere. So put it on a tray. We're increasing our contrast and we're defining our workspace, which is the most important thing for our kids with low or no vision or CVI. Unless they have a defined workspace, their workspace is endless. They have no idea where their boundaries are. Okay. Sorry, I'm like super thirsty. 
So this tray is increasing that contrast and providing boundaries which a child needs to be able to explore with greater ease. <coughs> so spills happen. Trays contain it. I have a photo of a student working on how to make a bowl of cereal. Very important life lesson. I have a container of oat milk, a bag of cereal, a pre-packaged container of Kix cereal, and a bowl. And so the student kept saying, I want to work on pouring cereal into a bowl. I said, all right. So here we are, we're working on it, and the, the cereal is all over the tray. Okay, But that's OK. Because I said to the student, how am I going to clean this up? This is such a big mess. And I said, guess what? We carried the tray over to the trash, and we, we dumped it out. It was absolutely fine. We contained the mess. So we're not only increasing that workspace, but we're also allowing a student to clean up after themselves, taking accountability and being able to participate in that. Fun fact, for teaching how to pour out of such a large container, we talked about how do you measure liquids if you're pouring from such a large amount. We started pouring initially with just a small two-cup pitcher. Then we worked up to a quart, to a pint, to a half gallon, to a gallon. And we didn't always fill up those containers all the way, so save those containers at home and pre-measure out some of your liquids if your student is making cereal on their own so they can have those built-in successes of pouring their own milk or their own whatever it may be for their cereals. <coughs> Excuse me. My cap is still on. Trays can increase our contrast. I have, this is terrible, actual terrible contrast because I have four red apples on a red tray. But the green apple looks fabulous, okay? <laughs> so let's just focus on the green apple there. Um, but I also have a red um, apple core slicer on a black um, cutting board, and that black cutting board is white on the other side, so you can choose what con contrast you would like. I love my red cooking tools. A lot of times you can find those at the dollar store. This activity, my student knew what an apple was, knew how to cut an apple, did not know that apples of other flavors and kinds existed. My student was 18 years old, heading to college, did not know that there was anything other than apples. They just knew apple. And so for that lesson for that day, it was not only cutting practice with repetition, but it was also identifying, do you have a favorite kind of apple? What's your preference? Get creative. And most importantly, trays allow you to define that space and organize your activity. So in this photo, we we're making fried rice. Don't judge, that is canned chicken, okay? But we're all about being independent, okay? Can my student use raw chicken and cook it make it healthy and clean up that entire area with salmonella? Probably not, we're not at that point yet. So how are we gonna allow him to have a success and be completely independent? Can chicken, all right? It doesn't taste that bad, I promise. We had rice that we made in a rice cooker because that's a nice, easy tool. There's only one option, off and on. We like those kind of devices. We have some leftover veggies from lunch. So with my tray, which increases my, con my contrast, defines my workspace. I can now set my pot on the stove or on the burner. I know that my spoon is always gonna be at the left-hand side of my tray. I can easily trail, find it, place it back where it belongs, and find it again with ease. I'm not searching the counter. I know with confidence where my spoon is. And I can go along in my tray from one, oh, that's not a very good photo either. But anyways, from one bowl to the next and cook first, second, third, fourth, because I know what I want to do first, I know what I want to do second, and I know what I want to do last. Because when we approach cooking, we want to have everything prepared and ready to go. None of this like, oh, I'll crack. All right, in this photo, the egg's not cracked yet, but you know, oh, no cracking the egg later, or oh, no cutting up the spice, the peppers or onions, everything is ready to go and lined up in second, separate bowls. So first I'm going to pan sear my canned chicken and then I'm going to 
cook my broccoli and then I'm gonna add in my rice and lastly I will add in that egg. And so I know exactly what I'm doing and I can stand there throughout the entire activity and not have to pause and worry about what to do next. So how do we get trays? You, technically you can buy them on Amazon, right? But we wanna think about cheap and effective ways to do this at home. Cookie sheets, all right? This is gonna define your workspace. You could use, this is an aluminum pan, but I also have a traditional cookie sheet, okay? These are more than for just baking. These are for organizing your space, for allowing you to define your child's area. Maybe they're changing their hearing aid batteries. Right, those little suckers roll and they're really small. Maybe they're beginning to explore organizing their medications. Whatever it is, Working over a tray allows for definition, contrast, and ease of access. So I'm almost, I got 10 minutes left. So now we're on to room organization. So what does your child need? Do they need color? Do they need contrast? Do they need tactile labels? Maybe you're using tapes. Perhaps you're using rug liner. Perhaps you're using your, thank you pipe cleaner. <laughs> I will never remember what these are called. I always want to call them earwigs, which is really bizarre. And I know that they're not earwigs and I don't know why you I like, label on your I should, I should put a label yes. on my pipe cleaner. <laughs> that would be a reasonable accommodation. And um, anyways, so what does your child need? This photo depicts a student utilizing the braille that I placed on the um, dresser drawers, but I also have red tape. I've also done photos or large prints, but we want to make sure that they know what's in their room. Bins in the drawers to organize their drawers. I'm telling you people, I'm hilarious. All right, so we have a child um, organizing the dresser, the dresser drawer, there's socks on one section and underwear in the other. Again, those same bins that we used in the freezer, in our cabinets, use them in the, in the dresser, right? Long sleeve, short sleeve, pajama tops, pajama bottoms. You know those things get messy, mine are messy. Like it's hard, right? Leggings and tops, underwear and socks, whatever it may be, use some bins. If you don't have bins, one time I was at um, someone's room and we used tissue boxes. There were empty tissue boxes. So we just stuffed all the socks in there. They could just pull out the socks. Use what you have. Hamper, any basket, oh, oh sorry. Never mind. not like you needed to see it, but I did buy this hamper and it's still <laughs> at my house. Um, <laughs> hamper, any basket will do, okay? I've had so many students over the years who say to me, I have no idea where my clothes go. 18, 19 years old, going to college, very high functioning, take off their clothes at the end of the day, put on their PJs, super independent, they're making their lunches. They have no idea where their clothes go. So how do we start off small? How do we make this accessible? Any basket will do. Put your clothes when you take them off of your body into this basket. Maybe that basket's in the bathroom and they're in there bedroom, wherever it may be, here's a basket, right? Or maybe they're cleaning up at the end of the dinner. You want them to carry their plate to the sink, put it in a basket. How, allow them to walk with more confidence and ease to bring that to the sink. How are they gonna help out with whatever activity? Small baskets with handles, allow them to carry stuff more easily. Another thing in the bedroom is cord management. I know I have issues with this. I have cords everywhere. So in this photo, I have two bins, the same plastic bins that could be in a freezer or in a refrigerator. One has an Alexa with a cord running through the holes that happen to be built into the basket. Another one has an empty cord for an iPhone or an iPad or whatever, Apple product. And so you could label these or just know by memory. First basket is iPhone, second basket is Alexa, third basket is my Braille Note Touch. 
How many students struggle with identifying, plugging, charging? All of the cords, right? All the cords for all the devices. So place them into baskets. I have here a, um, a I guess I would call this like a magazine organizer type basket. These are great for soups, for our condiments, for our iPads, for our braille charger, our braille note touches that need to be charged. These are great to have to help organize all of our electronics because that's another type of management. So goal number one, by the end of today's training, I will learn three strategies for making my home more, ex oh geez, more accessible for my child. Does everybody feel as if they have achieved goal number one? Yeah, good, okay. Goal number two, by the end of today's training, I will better understand why blindness specific products may not always be what is best for my child. Everybody kind of get where I'm going with that? It may not always be the best, yeah. Think outside the box. Goal number three, by the closing of this training, I will begin to view products in a new way. Yeah, everybody's looking at things in a new way. I love that, I love that. Right, all we see here is possibilities, right? With every product. And goal number four, by the closing of this training, I will recognize the power that I have to allow my child or student to be more engaged and independent within my home or classroom by making small adaptations and modifications to the pre-existing appliances or spaces. How does everybody feel about that? Feeling good? Does everybody have some strategies that they can go home and do? Excellent. So now I have a question for everybody. Who here has a birthday in July? Do you really? Awesome, I love it. You get to bring all this home with you and go modify your home. I wanted it to be a fight, like, I'm in July, and like, I'm in July, and I was gonna be like, I don't know. I don't know what I was gonna do with that, but perfect. I do not wanna bring all this home, so this is for you, sir. So enjoy. Some of the stuff that I also bought, gloves. What could these be used for? What if my child has CBI? and I want to help them attend to my activity, maybe I'm going to wear gloves while I'm baking. Maybe while I'm showing them where the oven is, the oven door, I'm leading them with my gloves. Right? Shelf liner, instant contrast. Also, things won't slip around. Multi-purpose. Shallow baskets for all your dresser drawer needs. I bought this. It's like not like in. I don't even really know what this is. This is a chopper. It's baking and, and scooping things out. Yeah, but I feel like they usually it's a are rubber. It's called a pastry knife. Pastry it's knife. Look at you. Cutting bread and sorting. Really, but it's not serrated. No, you don't need to make it. Perfect. perfect. I love it. Well, then now you can have this because <laughs> I. This is yours. So why uh, why I use these are for introducing cutting for soft foods like bananas or avocados or something like that. They're not serrated and we're not, I hate using plastic knives because I feel almost like that's belittling in a, in a way, especially when I'm working with adults. So this is a great way. Uh, and, they break easy. and they break easy. Yeah, they really do, I know. So I love these, pastry knife. Um, I have a large permanent marker, it's black, right? So we can do some large print lettering. And I have a kneeling pad. I have no idea where I was going with this, but I just thought it would be a really great way to add contrast. I don't know, like a workspace, maybe bring attention to something that you're working on. So enjoy, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it is all yours. Hmm? Yes, yes, yeah, you could put a heavy item onto. I like that. Are you an OT? No. Yeah. <laughs> I just play with blind people. I know. Yeah. And I'm trying to say, it's down there. You've got to feel the button. I can't mm -hmm. feel it, and she feels with her thumb. Yeah. I can't get her to feel with her index finger. I know. I have mine marked Do you want exactly as hers. Yeah. So that I can tell it, slide down, feel yep. this, slide to the left. That's good, that. that's good. I'll push it till it beeps. 
You might have to move so it around because it doesn't get I like that. That's I good. I did it myself. Yeah. Okay, good. I don't have to drive to have an idea house to reset your microwave. <laughs> I'm so good. I was at a gentleman's house this week. He is very new to vision loss, lost his vision um, six months ago, and has not received any services of any kind. So I went to go meet him um, to talk to him about services that um, I have at the Carroll Center. And before I left, he was very upset because he has not been able to utilize his microwave in six months. And I didn't have any stuff with me. I said, you got any duct tape? I said, yeah, all right, I got duct tape. So I duct tape. I made like fake tactile buttons out of duct tape. And now he like had his wife send me an email. Like, oh my God, my husband had used the microwave for the first time in six months. I just like made a funky little button out of duct tape. And I just put it on the 30 second and cancel. And I was like, I love, I love marking microwaves. Yes, in the back. I like to me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I don't know your name. Uh, Kathy. Kathy, I like hey. To use those, um, like the kneeling pad or just any, like a silicone mat or anything that's a different color like that. Yeah. To put, like, as I'm doing a whole cooking routine, I'll put, like, mm. my knives there. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. Or I'll put, like, the scraps there. Yeah. Portable, just so I make sure that I'm not getting confused or not reaching yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. aimlessly for something and then accidentally. That's good. For, for knives, you know what I do? Under the cutting board. No, no, you know what I do? So I'm, I'm right-handed, all right? So let's say I, I always wanna put my knife at the back of the tray with the blade facing away from me. So that way, if I trail upwards with my right hand and inwards, I'm always gonna hit the handle, never the blade. But I love your contrast <laughs> idea. Yeah, and we sometimes have kids put them, slip them under the, cut, the blade yeah, yeah. the cutting board so that when they're searching around, yeah. They're, Absolutely. Find the handle as well. Absolutely. But, but I always have like a refuse bucket. Glasses in the sink. Like in yeah. the kitchen, I have a rule: no glasses in the sink because they're clear, and then I don't see them very mm -hmm. well. Um, so sometimes I'll use like a high contrast mat on the side, and then I know that on that mat are all the clear glasses. That's a great adaptation. Mm -hmm. I love that. Do you want my? You want the kneeling mat? No, I'm cool. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> anytime. I have to fly home. So all like, right. <laughs> I only have to drive a mile, but I don't really want it either. All right. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? I just have another statement. Um, yeah. On the snack bins, mm. I use clear shoe boxes because mm. I have a two-year-old father in my house, mm -hmm. and he learned how to reach in the bag. So mm. right off the top, um, he now brings you the bin, but he can't open it. Yeah, he's it. So smart. Smart. I so love it says that. Who snacks are in which bin? Too. Yeah, and he can identify which bin is his. That's great. Oh, he's just hungry. That's excellent. Well, thank you everybody for coming to my talk.